Hello, this is Matt Hesser with Dimensional Nomad Games, and welcome to Eclectic Decks Episode 2. Today I'm going to be talking about my Sidri Galvanic Genius deck, which is an Esper artifact deck, so white, blue, and black. Now, Sidri as a commander, she is a 2-2 legendary human artificer. Her abilities are 1 blue. Target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost until end of turn. And then her other ability is one black and one white to target artifact creature gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Now, normally with the Sidri deck, you'll just see a lot of Esper good stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, just random Esper artifacts and things like that. Um, when I designed Sidri, I already had an Aloro deck. I already had an Esper Good Stuff deck. I then ended up letting my wife have that. So <clears throat> the Sidri deck is one of those where my concept for the deck is I want to kill you with a soul ring. I want to animate my soul ring, give a lifelink and death touch, and then kill you with it somehow. So basically the concept is I play a bunch of non-creature artifacts, um, animate them, and then attack with them. So you'll see that in the thought process behind the deck. Now, the deck hasn't been updated in a couple of years, so I don't have any of the uh, Ether Revolt and uh, Kaladesh stuff in there. Um, there's only one card, which you'll recognize when you see it. But otherwise, it's an older deck. It's actually built from before the Vancouver Mulligan rule was in place, so I still only had 33 lands in the deck. Um, I actually plan on updating this deck uh, in the next month or so. Um, I've included a list at the end of this with some of the cards that will be going in here just to improve uh, both the mana curve and uh, a couple more mana ramps, and we'll see you know, how the deck does after that. So let's go ahead and get into the deck itself, um, and we'll take a look. So if you're curious, the deck list is available on tappedout.net. You can go and look for uh, Sidri's Artifact Horde. Um, you can look for... My profile, which is on there under Shattered Shattered Empires. I'll also have the link in the description on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube or if you're just listening on iTunes. Um, just go to tappedout.net and look for Shattered Empires, all one word. And then it'll have all my decks listed there. But in the meantime, here's the deck list. Like I said, I'll have a link in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the lands. Now, the first thing I'm going to show is the uh, fetch lands. No, uh, mana fixing is important. It's less important because most of the deck is artifact based, but it's good to be able to get those colored abilities, at least for my commander and things like that. So we've got your normal get your uh, basic lands out with the Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds, both of those sack to go and get a basic land, put into play tapped, and then shuffle your library. Then I have the normal fetch lands. Polluted Delta, Flooded Strand, and Marsh Flats. Each of those have tap, pay one life, sacrifice this, and then search for one of either basic land type. So the Polluted Delta goes and gets an island or swamp. Flooded Strand gets a plains or an island. And Marsh Flats gets a plains or a swamp. Now the nice thing about the fetch lands is that those get uh, non-basic lands. So you can go get the shock lands, the dual lands, and things like that out of those. Um... Speaking of, so here's all the different quote-unquote dual lands. So you've got the traditional dual lands, the shock lands, which are lands that come into play tapped unless you pay two life, and then we have what are called the check lands, which they come into play tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. So, you know, you've got, for your black and white, you've got scrub lands, which is the original dual land and godless shrine. Then for blue-white, you have... Hollowed Fountain, which is the shock land, Prairie Stream, which is the uh, check land, and then Tundra, which is the original dual land. And then for black and white, we have Sunken Hollow, which is your check land, Underground Sea, which is your dual land, and Watery Grave, which is your uh, shock land. Now, what's nice about these is, like I said, with those fetches that I described earlier, you can go and get any of these, so color fixing is really easy. Um, then you've got some of your other utility lands. 
Temple of the False God taps for two mana, but that only works if you have five or more lands. Otherwise, it sits there and does nothing. Arcane Sanctum and comes into play tapped, but then can tap for one of either uh, any of the three colors in the deck. Command Tower, which I think should be in every commander deck that's two or more colors, taps for any color the your commander's color identity. And then, because this is an artifact deck, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods taps for one generic mana, or it can tap for two mana if you're using that for colorless spells. Um, so artifacts count as a colorless spell. and But you can only act that ability if you have seven more lands. Seven lands is not a hard problem with Commander. Then you have the Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, which taps for a colorless mana, or you can pay two and tap to gain one life for each colorless creature you control. Uh, this was done more for the Eldrazi, but it gets a lot of use here because I'll be playing a lot of artifact creatures and then turning all of my artifacts into creatures as well. And then the rest of the 33 lands are just basic lands, five islands, five swamps, four plains. Uh, the reason it's only four plains rather than five plains is I've got more white sources than I do uh, black or blue sources. All right, so moving on, we have our mana rocks. You have the traditional soul ring, taps for two colorless. You've got Dark Steel Ingot, which is an indestructible artifact for three mana that taps for one mana of any color. Gilded Lotus is a five cost artifact that taps for three mana of any color. Dreamstone Hedron costs six mana. It's a little bit on the spendy side. It taps for three mana, or you can pay three mana, tap, sack it to draw three cards. So it's both a draw source and a mana source, although the draw source is only one time unless you've got artifact recursion, which if you're playing artifacts, you really should. Uh, Pristine Talisman costs three mana, and it taps for a colorless mana, and you gain a life. So even if you don't have anything you can spend the mana on, it's always good to tap at the end of your opponent's turn, put the mana in your pool since there's no mana burn, and gain the life. So always tap it no matter what. Thran Dynamo is an artifact that costs four mana, taps for three mana. One of the more Mana efficient one. It's not quite Soul Ring, which is one for two, but four for three is really damn good. Uh, and then you have Obelisk of Esper, which costs three, f and then taps for one of any of the colors in the deck. All right, and then we have what I call my pseudo mana sources. So these don't tap directly for mana, but they are things that enable more mana into the deck. <clears throat> Altar of Shadows costs seven um, and says at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Altar of Shadows. Then it has pay seven tap, destroy target creature, then put a charge counter on Altar of Shadows. So every time you kill a creature, it gets a charge counter, and then at your pre-combat main phase, you get mana for each creature you've killed, uh, which is pretty nice. I mean, seven to kill a creature is a little bit expensive, but this is commander. You're also playing colorless, so getting seven mana shouldn't be that hard. Crucible of Worlds uh, costs three for an artifact that says you may play lands from your graveyard. What's nice is that this isn't just lands that you've had destroyed it includes those search lands that you played earlier so the evolving wild terramorphic expanse and any of those fetch lands you can then put those into play and then immediately use every turn so you're guaranteed that land drop so that's nice black market is an enchantment for three and two black that says whenever a creature dies put a charge counter on black market at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on black market. In multiplayer pods, this is an amazing card because it doesn't care whose creature died. So it could be your creature, an opponent's creature. So it can get out of hand really fast. So it's a lot of mana to throw in here. Um, Juridic Satchel is three mana for an artifact that says pay two and tap. Reveal the top card of your library. If it is a creature card, Put a 1-1 green sapling token onto the battlefield. If it is a land card, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. If it is a non-creature non-land, you gain two life. What's nice is it doesn't put the land on there tapped. So it's two mana, reveal the top card as a land, put it into play. It's fantastic. Uh, plus it doesn't count towards your land play for the turn. 
Uh, and then, of course, the ever-popular Solemn Simulacrum is also called Zad Robot. So four mana for a 2-2 artifact golem. Uh, artifact creature golem that says when Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto your battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. When Solemn Simulacrum dies, you may draw a card. He's used in a lot of decks, not just ones that need mana fixing. Even in monocolor decks, he's good just to ramp out. Gives you a decent sized blocker, and when he dies, you draw a card. So he's got pretty much everything good about him. There's no downside to this card. Alright, and then. I've got uh, a bunch of utility artifacts and a planeswalker. So these are things that just enable other things in the deck. So Unwinding Clock costs 4 mana for an artifact that says untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. So you've got a lot of tap abilities in the deck. So this lets you use them over and over and over, especially considering the amount of mana rocks you've already we've already shown. Prototype Portal costs 4 mana for an artifact that has imprint when prototype portal enters the battlefield you may exile an artifact card from your hand and you can pay x and tap to put a token that's a copy of the exiled card onto the battlefield x is the converted mana cost of that card for instance if you exiled the solemn simulacrum in this you can pay for it tap put a copy of solemn simulacrum onto the mana battlefield every turn so it's got a lot of use and with some of the other cards in here that you'll see like sculpting steel or friction metamorph it's fantastic to be able to just throw out more and more copies or like a soul ring you can put a soul ring out every turn and that's just amazing all right then arcbound reclaimer four mana for a zero zero artifact creature golem it has modular two which means it comes into play with two plus one plus one counters and when it dies you can put any plus one plus one counters from it onto another artifact creature you control and then you can remove a plus one plus one counter from it to put target artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library. So it gets a lot of use just reclaiming some of those artifacts. There's a lot of artifact hate in the game, so getting those cards back is really good. Alright, so Voltaic Construct costs four mana for a 2 2 artifact creature golem that says pay to untap a uh, target artifact creature. Now keep in mind our commander says one blue turn any artifact into an artifact creature. So one blue animates it, and then two mana untaps that artifact. So any of those artifacts that tap for three mana, this is effectively infinite mana. All right, so Sculpting Steel, uh, as I mentioned, is one of those really nice ones. It's three mana for an artifact that says, you may have Sculpting Steel enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact on the table, on the battlefield. So you can copy a Soul Ring, you can copy... The prototype part of it, because it enters as it, you can then um, do the imprint. You can copy, you know, anything. Especially with you use the next guy. Friction Metamorph is three and then a Friction Blue, which means you can either pay a blue or two life for a zero zero artifact creature shapeshifter. And it says you may have Friction Metamorph enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. So if you choose to copy somebody's creature, you can then use Sculpting Steel to copy that creature as well. So those two combined are really useful. And then uh, Tezzeret the Seeker is 3 and 2 blue for a 4 loyalty Planeswalker Tezzeret. His plus 1 ability is untap up to 2 target artifacts. His minus X is search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. And then minus 5 is artifacts you control uh, all animate uh, into 5-5 five, five versions of themselves. So mostly I just use him for the untap. Sometimes I'll use him for the search, you know, because minus 1 to go get a soul ring is pretty nice. <clears throat> Alright, then the deck also has uh, a bunch of removal because it's mostly based around... Artifact rather than artifact creatures. It plays a lot of creature kill. The first group is just my target removal and then the next group I'll show you is the uh, Board wipes. So first we have the spear of Heliod. It's one and two white for a legendary enchantment artifact Creatures you control get plus one plus one and one and two white and tap destroy target creature that dealt damage to you this turn so if someone attacks you or Pings you or something like that. You can pay three and tap to destroy that creature this is one of those I'm 
still not sure if I'm going to keep in the deck. I don't run a lot of creatures, so it doesn't get the the plus one plus one doesn't get as much value as I would like. But it's kind of a flavor thing for me because if you animate it, it immediately turns into a four four because it's got a CMC of three, so it turns into a three three, and then it gives itself a plus one plus one. Um, <clears throat> but it's still one of those I'm on the fence about. Tower of Calamities is four mana for an artifact that says pay eight tap. Tower of Calamities deals 12 damage to target creature. It can kill pretty much any creature it can hit, um, but it's also nice to hit something like your own Stuffy Doll, because um, then it deals 12 damage to a player. Now, yeah, it's 8 mana. Again, that much mana is not that big of a deal. And this is one of those that with the Voltaic Key and anything that gives you unlimited mana, um, this goes infinite damage. So as long as you've got a target, you can go infinite damage. And then Spine of Ish Saw is 7 mana for an artifact that says when Spine of Ish Saw enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. And then when Spine of Ish Saw is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spine of Ish Saw to its owner's hand. This is another fun one to animate because it becomes a 7-7 seven, seven that even if it dies, comes right back to your hand. And then gives you another opportunity to uh, kill someone with it. Or kill something with it. Yet yeah, again, 7 mana. Not that big of a deal here in Commander. Yeah, um, the only downside to this deck in general is it's a lot more late game. It doesn't have a lot of mid, uh, early game or late or mid game. It's very, very much a late game uh, deck, which is why it's more suited to um, Commander pods than one on one. In fact, I don't even know how to design decks for one on one. But again, that's also why I run a whole bunch of board clearing effects. Like, we have Wrath of God, which is 2 and 2 white for a sorcery that says, destroy all creatures, they can't regenerate. Damnation, which is literally a black version of Wrath of God, for 2 and 2 black for a sorcery that says, destroy all creatures, they can't regenerate. Supreme Verdict is 1, 2 white and a blue for a sorcery that says, Supreme Verdict can't be countered, destroy all creatures. Faded Retribution, 4 and 3 white for an instant, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers. If it's your turn, scry two. Scry two means look at the top two cards of your library, put them in any order on top or bottom of your deck. Um, Decree of Pain is six and two black for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. It also has cycling for a three and two black. Cycling is pay the cost, discard this card, draw a card. And then when you cycle Decree of Pain, all creatures get neg two, neg two until end of turn. Kirtar's Wrath is 4 and 2 white for sorcery. Do you destroy all creatures? They can't regenerate. And if you have Threshold, which is 7 or more cards in your graveyard, instead destroy all creatures, then put 2 white, 1-1 uh, one, one white spirit tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Alright, then we have Frection Rebirth, which is 4 and 2 white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures. Then create an XX colorless horror artifact creature token where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. Marshall Coup, which is X and two white for a sorcery. Put X one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. Terminus is four and two white for a sorcery. Put all creatures onto the bottom of their owner's library. It also has Miracle for one white, which says, you may cast this card for its Miracle cost when you draw it, if it is the first card you draw this turn. All is Dust is seven mana for a tribal sorcery, Eldrazi, which says, each player sacrifices all colored permanents he or she controls. What's nice is, most of the deck is non-colored permanents, so, and lands don't have any color, so it kills, it's a pretty one-sided kill yeah you'd lose sidri if you have her out or some of the other cards but for the most part it's one-sided toxic deluge which is two and a black for a sorcery that says is an additional cost to cast toxic deluge pay x life all creatures get neg x neg x until end of turn then of course the ever popular cyclonic rift which goes in pretty much every blue deck which says one and a blue uh instant return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand and then overload for six and a blue, you can re replace target with each. So it would bounce each non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. And then finally, final judgment, four and two white for a sorcery that says remove all creatures from the game. So that is 13 different board wipes. 
All right. Now, a lot of the deck is expensive, and a lot of the deck is specialized, so you need ways to get to those. So here are all of my search effects and draw effects. We have the Diabolic Revelation, which is X, 3, and 2 black for a sorcery that says, search your library for up to X cards and put those cards into your hand, then shelf your library. Demonic Tutor, which is 1 and a black for a sorcery that says, search your library for a card and put that card in your hand, then shelf your library. Beseech the Queen costs either 3 black, or for each black you can't pay, you can pay 2 colorless. For a sorcery that says, search your library for a card with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control, reveal it and put it in your hand, and then shelf your library. Planar Portal is an artifact that costs 6 mana, uh, and then the ability is, pay 6 tap, search your library for any card, and put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. So it's basically a 6 mana Demonic Tutor that you can do over and over and over. Then we have Liliana of the Dark Realms. She's a Planeswalker for 2 and 2 black for 3 loyalty, and she's a Liliana. Her plus 1 ability is search your library for a swamp, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shelf your library. What's nice is it doesn't say basic swamp, so you can go get dual lands, which is why she's in here for mana fixing. Her minus 3 is target creature gets neg x, neg x or plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is the number of swamps you control. I don't think I've ever used that ability in this deck. And then her minus 6, which is only takes four turns to get to, is you get an emblem that says swamps you control to have tap. Add four black mana to your mana pool. So she's really nice. And then the next card is one of those, it's a terrible card. It's just not done very well. But it's fun and it's flavorful and it's Aladdin's Lamp. It costs ten mana for an artifact that says pay X tap and look at the top X cards of your library, choose one, uh, put it into your hand, then put the rest of those cards in the bottom of your library, and X can't be zero. So you can pay one, tap, and look at the top one card. And this is a replacement for your draw. So if it was your draw step, you can then instead pay X to look at X cards and pick one instead of just your normal one card. And it's, it's not good. But it's, it's one of those that wins the flavor, plus it's a 10 mana card. So when I animate it, it turns into a 10 10. Then we have Erebos, God of the Dead. For three and a black, you get a 5 7 legendary enchantment god, which is indestructible. Uh, and if you don't have the proper devotion, which is five black mana, he's not a creature. Your opponents can't gain life. And then for one and a black and two life, you can draw a card. So it's a draw a card that costs me life, but. You have a lot of life to start out with in Commander at 40 life, so it's not that big of a deal. Plus, I do have a ways with just my Commander by giving uh, to gain life by giving one of my artifact creatures lifelink and death touch. All right, and then Bident of Thassa is 2 and 2 blue for a legendary enchantment artifact. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And then for 1 and a blue, you can tap and have creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. Then Staff of Nim costs 6 mana for an artifact that says at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. And then tap Staff of Nim deals 1 damage to target creature or player. And then Tower of Fortunes, this is another one of those terrible cards. The ability is expensive, but it's one of those fun ones, matches the flavor of the deck. It's 4 mana for an artifact that says pay 8, tap, draw 4 cards. So it is 4 for 8 mana, which is actually a really good ratio, but it's getting to that 8 mana that's so hard. And then I have the cards that I consider, like, pseudo-draw. They all require other effects in order to be able to draw. Uh, well of Lost Dreams costs 4 mana for an artifact that says, Whenever you gain life, you may pay X, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. If you do, draw X cards. So let's say I gained 4 life. I can pay anywhere from 0 to 4 to draw 0 to 4 cards. And then Tamio the Moon Sage, she's 3 and 2 blue for a Planeswalker. Tamio for 4 loyalty. Her plus 1 ability is tap target permanent. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Her minus 2 is draw a card for each tapped creature your opponents control. And then her minus 8 is um, you get an emblem that says you have no maximum hand size. And whenever a card is put into a graveyard from any to your graveyard from anywhere, you may return it to your hand. Uh, 
I'm still not sure why I run this. I think it's just because I was going through what can I keep in the deck that doesn't die to all of my board wipes, and I had a bunch of Planeswalkers. But so this is probably one of the ones that'll get replaced, um, because realistically, not a lot of people tap their creatures, uh, or if they do, they're going to kill your Planeswalker. <sighs> all right, and then we have Thassa, God of the Sea, for two and a blue. You get a five-five legendary enchantment creature god. With indestructible, you need at least five devotion for her to be the creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. So look at the top card of your library. You can choose to put it on the top or bottom. And then for one and a blue, target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. So that's really nice, especially when I'm animating them, something like that, a lion's lamp. So I've got a 10-10 lifelink death touch that I just smacked you with for two mana. Well, total of five mana, because it's one to animate, two to give it uh, lifelink and death touch, and then two to uh, uh, give it unblockable. All right, and then I've got a couple of other ways to get things back out of my graveyard. I've got the Treasury Thrall, which is four, white and a black, for a 4-4 four, four Creature Thrall with Extort, which says whenever you cast a spell, you can pay either white or black. And if you do, each opponent loses life, and you gain that much life. And when Treasury Thrall attacks, you may turn target artifact, creature, or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Shroom the Hegemon, which is three, a white, a blue, and a black, for a 5-5 five, five Legendary Artifact Creature Sphinx. With flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you may turn target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. One of the most useful creatures in the game. Well, in the deck. Mimic Vet costs three for an artifact that says imprint. Whenever a non-token creature is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may exile that card. If you do, return other cards exiled with Mimic Vet to the owner's graveyard. Basically, you can only have one card under Mimic Vet, is what it's saying. And then for three and tap, you can put a token onto the battlefield. That's a copy of the exiled card. It gains haste. Exiled at the beginning of the next end step. So I could do something like Shroom, Treasury Thrall, um, the Friction Metamorph, it picked a creature. Anything someone else does. <clears throat> What's really fun is to do something like Worm Coil Engine, which says when it dies, you get two tokens. So lots of fun things you can copy with Mimic Fat. Then Faded Return is 4 and 3 black for an instant that says, put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains indestructible, and if it's on your, if you cast this on your turn, you scry 2. I like that it's a graveyard, so it doesn't matter whose creature you're stealing, you get it, it then gains indestructible. Just look out for something like Homeward Path. Don't use this if they're playing Homeward Path. Alright, and then the deck does run a few ways to protect the stuff in the deck, Avacyn, Angel of Hope, is 5 and 3 white for a 8-8 eight, eight legendary creature angel with flying, vigilance, and indestructible, and other permanents you control have indestructible. Then you have Darksteel Forge, which costs 9 for artifacts you control have indestructible. And then, of course, the Chromos Memorial costs 7 for a legendary artifact that says creatures you control have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, and protection from black and from red. So basically turns all of your artifact, uh, all of your creatures into a Chroma's list of static abilities. Then there's just a couple of fun creatures in the deck. Stuffy Doll, one of the cards I mentioned earlier. Uh, it costs 5 mana for a 0-1 artifact creature construct. And when it enters the battlefield, you pick a player. So Stuffy Doll is indestructible, and whenever Stuffy Doll is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. So you pick an opponent, and anytime Stuffy Doll takes damage, that opponent takes that much damage. So And then Stuffy Doll taps to deal 1 damage to itself. So it's fun is if you can block something with it, you can just tap to deal itself damage, or you can use the Tower of Calamities to deal it 12 damage. So it's got a lot of utility in the deck. Steel Hellkite costs 6 for a 5-5 artifact creature dragon with flying. Then pay 2 mana to give it plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. And you can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X... Um, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hell Kite this turn, activate this ability only once each turn. So if you attack somebody, deal combat damage with it, you can pay, like, one to kill anything that costs one, soul rings, whatnot, or better yet, zero destroys all their tokens. Alright, Worm Coil was one of those creatures I mentioned earlier. It's six mana for a 6-6 six, six artifact creature worm with death touch and lifelink. And when it dies, you get a 3-3 Death Touch and a 3-3 Lifelink. So if you that's one of the kind of creatures you have on your uh, Mimic Vat. When it dies, every turn, you get another 3-3 and a 2-3-3. Uh, three, three. So it's nice. Then Thada Adele um, Acquisitor is 1 and 2 blue 
for a 2-2 Legendary Merfolk Rogue with Island Walk, and whenever thought a Del Inquisitor deals combat damage to a player, search that player's library for an artifact card and exiles. Then that player shuffles his or her library, and then until the end of the turn, you can play that card. So not only do you remove a possible threat, but then you get to cast that card uh, if you want. Now, unfortunately, if you don't do it that turn, you no longer can do it later. Um, but it's still very useful. You can get their mana rocks, you can get some of their answers and stuff like that. So I really enjoy it. All right. Then we have the Colossus of Akros. It is 8 mana for a 10-10 artifact creature golem with Defender and Indestructible. Defender means it can't attack. Um, but then for 10 mana, you can make it give it Monstrosity 10. So it gets 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So it becomes a 20-20. And if it's monstrous, it gains Trample and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. So it turns into a 20-20 Trample that is indestructible. So, yes, that's 18 mana, but you can do it on two separate turns. And so, yeah, it's very late game, but wow. A 2020 Indestructible Trample is nothing to sneeze at. Especially if you give a lifelink to Death Touch. Because then you only have to assign one damage to any of the blockers. And you can trample over with the rest of the 19 damage. And then Karn Silver Golem is 5 mana for a 4-4 Legendary Artifact Creature Golem. Apparently all the creature, artifact creatures in here are golems almost. Uh, whenever Karn Silver Golem blocks or becomes blocked, it gets minus 4, plus 4 until on turn, so it turns into a 0, 8. And then it gives you the same ability that Sidri does, which is pay 1, target non-creature artifact, becomes an artifact creature with power, and has equal to its converted mana cost until end of turn. Alright, and then I've got a few other utility spells. Uh, spell Twine is 5 and a blue for a sorcery that says exile target art instant or sorcery from your graveyard, and target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard, and copy those spells. And you can cast those copies, uh, if able, with um, without paying their mana cost, and then you exile spell twine. So if I need to cast another board wipe or something like that, uh, this gives me an, basically a 14th board wipe. Then Hercules Recall is one and a blue for a instant that says, All artifacts in play owned by target player are returned to their uh, owner's hands. So basically just bounces all of target player's uh, artifacts. So you can use that in emergency if someone's like, Shatterstorm, be sure all artifacts, you can bounce all your own. Or um, if someone else is playing a lot of really annoying artifacts, you can bounce all of theirs. Then Tainted Either, this is one of those cards that will probably come out of the deck. It's uh, two and two black for an enchantment that says, whenever a creature comes into play, its controller sacrifices a creature or land. Now, most of my stuff is based off of my uh, artifacts, but I do play a few creatures, so this could hurt me, especially if I'm behind on the land, but it'll probably end up coming out at some point. Uh, it might be replaced something like Microsynth Lattice, which is an artifact that turns everything into an artifact, especially if I then Hercules Recall, because it bounces an entire player's board. Alright. Uh, Mirror Works is 5 mana for an artifact that says whenever another non-token artifact enters the battlefield under my control, I might pay 2 to put a token copy of that artifact onto play. So any of those artifacts I said earlier, for 2 mana, I can get a second one. Uh, if I had Mirror Works out in play. So, which is really nice. It helps me down. To, especially nice if you pay two to copy one of those mana rocks. So, like, Thran Dynamo is four to get an artifact that taps for three. Then I can pay two more for another artifact that taps for three. So, I just spent six mana for two artifacts that tap for a total of six mana. So, it's pretty nice. And then, Aetherflux Reservoir is that card I told you about from the Kaladesh block that I just added to the deck. It's four mana for an artifact that says, whenever you cast a spell, you can pay one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Then you can pay 50 life to have it deal 50 damage to target creature or player. So you start at 40, so getting to 50 is not that hard, especially since you're usually casting one or two spells a turn. So you're going to be getting one uh, one life and then two life, so a total of three. That's assuming you're not casting any other stuff, and I'm not using the lifelink. What's also nice is it's actually a win combo. Once I get to 51 life, I can give, I can animate this with Sidri. Then give it lifelink and death touch and kill everything in the game. Because I'll I'll spend 50 life to deal 50 damage and then gain 50 life. So I just go 50 to 1, or 51 to 1, over and over and over and over and over and kill any number of targets. Basically, usually you just kill the players. But it's also fun to say, I killed everything you had first and then killed you. Alright, now that was the 100 cards for the deck. Like I said, mostly the idea is to just animate my uh, giant 
artifacts and then kill you with it. Um, the deck needs some work. It's a little bit slow, like I said, so I'm going to be adding some more things to make the deck a little bit faster. Um, mana Vault's another mana rock. It costs one for an artifact that says tap, add three mana to your mana pool. Uh, it does not untap during your untap step. During your un uh, untap step, you can pay f four to untap it. Um, if during your upkeep it is still tapped, it deals one damage to you. And then Cranial Plating is an equipment for two mana that says equip creatures plus one plus zero for each artifact you control. It equips for one, and then you can pay two black to move it from one creature to another. So it's really nice. It's a huge power buff, especially for something that's getting uh, lifelink and death touch. Skeleton Shard is another card I want to add to the deck. It's three mana for an artifact that says pay three or one black and tap. Return target artifact creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's a really nice recursion effect, especially if my creatures are dying early. Uh, and then another new card from Ether Revolt, Planar Bridge. For six mana, you get a legendary artifact that says pay eight, tap, search your library for a permanent card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Most of the deck is permanents, except for the board wipes and some of the tutors, but this lets me go get any of those artifacts and just put them straight into play. So like Aladdin's Lamp that costs ten, I can pay eight to go search for it and put it into play. Or Avacyn, who costs 8. I can just pay 8, go search for her, put her in a play. So there's a lot of utility in that card. And again, like I said, with 8 mana, not that big of a deal. Plus, if I have my commander out, the Voltaic key, um, Construct and any of my rocks that tap for 3 or more mana, it's infinite mana, which then lets me put my entire deck into play. All right, so that's my entire deck. Like I said, I've got some updates. Those are the four cards I was thinking about, but there are a lot more cards that I think could possibly go in the deck. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at the deck. This is episode two of my Eclectic Deck series. The first one was Captain Sisse, who has since been updated. You can also find that deck list on there. Check out the video on YouTube. Look for... The uh, I don't know if I have the audio of that one, though, so you might just have to look up for YouTube. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and have a great day.